Right, so we had this assignment. And I got some emails. Uh, some of you are still not very familiar with this. It would be good to just go over. This is a more complicated than the uh, lecture that we had. But those who have taken class with me, you know my exam is always easier than the homework, right? So you should not see something more complicated. So what I would do is to just go through the KCL, KVR. Okay, actually, there's a systematic method I want to tell you, but I'm not doing that because that can make you uh, very confusing. You need to do matrix multiplication. But I would rather use this KCL so that you have a more in intuition, right? So you can decide the direction you want. Once you decide it, then you follow the direction, right? For example, here I call this voltage to plus minus, so the thrust plus C will go over the voltage because the D plus DT is the voltage, right? And then we, yeah. I think that makes sense, but the, those phi's are like more like the capital phi as opposed to, I mean, yeah, I guess that's just maybe your, the, the hand I want to understand there. That's capital phi and a little squiggly phi, lowercase phi. Now, you decide yourself, but for me, yeah. this one is always the face, right? This one is, let me just make it. Mm -hmm. This one is the face, okay? And the rest is the thrust, okay? And sometimes I have capital, sometimes lowercase, because turn out these two, am I right? These two are both lowercase, right? If you, uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, but you decide what you want. Okay, so I do the KCL, the first thing. I want IB equals to IA, right? This is what I gave to you. And again, we have the same definition, C, uh, C summation equals to the parasitic uh, capacitors and the shunt capacitor, which I put artificially because I want to make a transmog, right? What is the, what is the Josephson energy? H no, Josephson oh, junction uh, energy, e EJ cosine phi, right? What is the capacitive energy? Uh, Q squared over 2C. Which C are we talking about when we talk about the capacitive energy of a, of a transmog? Both CJ. CS per CJ, okay? It is important, okay? Do not say that I did not give you hints. Okay, make this clear, right? Then how do we make a transmog? Do you remember? Put a capacitor, not an harmonic. Why we put a capacitor to the transmog? When you have a large capacitor, what happened to the, to the capacitive energy? Is it larger or smaller? Smaller. No, if you have a larger capacitor, will it be larger or smaller, the energy? Why is, it should be smaller, right? Q squared over V, uh, Q squared over C, right? Half, right? Yeah. So, so, we, so by adding the larger capacitor, we increase the Josephson junction energy, okay? And that will what? Reduce the charge noise but it hurt the enharmonicity. Okay, go back to study. That is important, right? Because uh, that is the main point. If you go to any conference, people talking about transmog, that they, uh, maybe in, not in the future, but now they will have a slide talking about that, why they would be transmog. Yeah. So if you have a, uh, uh, maybe how about, That's it. No, I don't want to show it. You have a jun uh, Josephson junction energy, EJ. You also have EC, the capacitive energy, right? If you have a large capacitor, it means you have a small energy, right? So EJ will be much larger than EC. Then you have a transmog, right? Let me try. How about this before, right? So you want to have uh, EC, 
as I told you, EC, the charging energy. So, so I say something wrong, so you, you got confused. I should say Q squared over E. That, is, uh, that should be the charging energy, so Q is always E or 2E, right? So this is E squared divided by 2C sum, right? Uh, if you solve the Hamiltonian, I never do that, and that's what people say. If your EJ, the Josephson Jensen energy, is much larger than the charging energy, then you see that it's insensitive to the background noise, the NG, the charge noise, right? Which is good. But however, the enharmonicity is decreased. Okay? So do not do the opposite, right? When I ask you how to increase the charging energy. No, this is the definition of EC. It is the E square. And depends on the uh, paper. Sometimes it's charging energy. is could prepare 2E, right? And that's why I have a few uh, derivation that, not here, right? But, but you go back to the slide, right? I, I switch from different, from one paper to another paper. One of them use a Cooper pair charging energy as EC. Another use just single electron. But it doesn't matter, they're all the same as long as you do the right uh, symbol, okay? So, uh, yeah, there, this may be off by a factor of four, but it doesn't affect any qualitative uh, argument, right? Depends on what they are talking about. Yeah. Uh, yeah, or maybe a little bit closer to the right, you're right, yeah. Because this one, you still have the sensitivity to the noise, right? So it depends on what you want. But you are right, if we make it too large, eventually they will be the same thing. Again, tell me why there's a problem if you have the same spacing between 0, 1, and 1, 2? To the another state, right? You don't have a well-defined two-level system. You have multi-level. And harmonicity, again, it is what? It is talking about the difference, right? There are many definitions, but one of the definitions is the difference between, you see here, I have two levels, uh, H omega 1, 0, from 0 state to 1 state, you have an energy difference, and then from 1 to 2, you have another energy difference, right? If they are, and harmonicity can be defined as H omega 2, 1 minus H omega 1, 0. So if it is 0, then it means no enharmonicity. It means you have a very perfect uh, parabolic well, like the simple harmonic oscillator, which is not good because you have multi-level. You can excite to outer state, right? Outside of the Hilbert space. Yeah? Okay, good. This is useful. Now, let's look at the solution again, right? So actually nothing new. Uh, you, if you just follow what we had for the charge QB, okay, A, I, I say uh, IA equal to IB, then what is IA, right? What is IB? IB is the current flow here, then of course is the change of the charge as a function of the time, right? DQCG uh, DT, right? And which is equal to CG VG dot. Is that okay? Because VG dot is DVG DT, yeah? And I know VG is what? Equal to 5B dot, right? That's why I got CG 5B dot dot, right? So that is IB. IA, just, um, just for the uh, KCL, it is equal to the Josephson junction energy, a uh, lot, no, current through the Josephson junction, and the current through the CS, right? And again, CS is just CV dot, C D V D T is the current. So this one you need to memorize if you are not familiar with this, okay? Or put in your cheat sheet. Current equal to CDVDT, right? Don't mess up in your exam. And that's why I just use Josephson Junction current IC cosine phi A, right? What is IC again? So, yeah, thank you. So this is confusing because you may call this IC, right? So so it is confusing, yeah? No. Because we are talking about, because, okay. Uh, okay, you're right, you're right. Okay, I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah. 
Correct, correct. Sorry. So this one should be summation, right? Okay, what? Uh, keep thinking this is PowerPoint. Wanted to turn on the laser pointer. So, okay, uh, that's one thing. And then you come up with this equation, right? So you have phi A and phi B. Then we try to eliminate them, just use KVL, phi C plus phi B dot plus phi A dot equal to zero, right? And then you just do substitution. You substitute, because I don't, I'm not interested in phi C, Right, so I want to eliminate, so I get phi A. So from one and two, as you can see, this is CG, this is uh, one, actually is this one. I, what I'm doing here is IB equals to IA. This is one, IB equal to IA. This is IB, this is IA, right? And then I substitute this uh, into, uh, here, number two, right? So I have this uh, CG minus phi A dot dot phi C dot dot phi A dot dot phi C dot dot, right? This one give me what? Because this is IB, right? CG, and then phi B is just equal to from here, phi B dot equals to negative phi A dot minus phi c dot. Is that okay? And then I put the another dot dot. That's why I got this one. So actually I say that I try to eliminate the phi b. Okay. And then I continue. I can still, I can continue to uh, understand more about uh, phi c, right? Because phi c also equal to phi b. I just need another equation. And what is i c? The current, right? Of course, this is not critical current, so that's why I say you can get confused. But IC is this total current IC. And that is the current through the capacitor, uh, through the inductor, which is, I gave you this equation, thrust equal to I times L, right? So you have phi C divided by L. And then the capacitor, of course, is just DQC DT, right? And that's why I get this one. And then by doing this, I, I can further substitute, I, I, I get this equation, right? Again, this is IB. This is IB, which is this one. I know it's a little bit confusing. This is IB, this is, oh. And this is IB. Do you see that? They are both IB. And then here, this is IC that I just did. Okay, this one is IC. Make sense? Yeah. So, so I, uh, and then I have four and five, I get another two equations. Now I need to form the Lagrangian, right? So what do I do? Uh, first of all, I say that you can just use those you find in natural. The natural, we actually use uh, quite a long Lagrangian for the charge qubit, yeah. Uh, so when you apply KVL and KVL, oh, sorry. If you start with the case of KVL, you got an equation, then you apply the Lagrange and you got the same equation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. I, I think. It's fair to say that in doing case of KVL analysis, and the equivalent motion is going to be totally mm, I, I don't know if I can say that. I, I don't want to comment on that. But this is just the equation of motion. Right? Whether you call it Newtonian or whatever, I, I don't know. But you're right. It's just nice to start with something classical and then you quantize it later. Yeah. Maybe you're right, but I still cannot say that. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. Now that, but then you need to guess, right? So, so here I got this equation of motion, right? So again, I can tell that in a real uh, approach, you actually will come up with the Lagrangian, uh, the kinetic energy and potential energy through some matrix multiplication. You, there's a systematic method, but I don't want to do that one. I did not teach you that one. You can read paper yourself. But you are here is just a way, and then you can see how it's related to our circuit. Okay. Uh, so now we get these two equation of motion, right? We have two of them, four and five, right? So what Lagrangian will give this two? Then uh, I will guess because uh, what I uh, this part 
is just the same as what we had in the uh, let in the in our lecture, but except that we couple it with a VG, yeah. But but now uh, it is an oscillating tank. Then uh, I I I will broadly think that maybe I can still use this one, right? And I gave you the hints. You can do this, yeah. I'm saying that in our uh, class, in our lecture note, the, the circuit that we study was this one, go to a voltage source called VG. Yeah, but yeah we then don't then have this one. Yeah. yeah. So now I define a new quantity called VG. <laughs> yeah, you, you need to uh, look at this, what I define here, right? They are different, yeah. Yeah, question. So, gem persistent points, uh, you have the Lagrangian. Can you linearly add them like that, like we're doing right here? Say, for instance, on a frame, uh, if, if there's different components, yeah. you can still just add up. To I think you want to check, double check, but yes, right? Because, uh, but if they're heavily coupled, you may not be just be able to add them, right? Uh, yeah. Like a yeah, for example, uh, what if I put the LC tank here? Yeah, mm -hmm. can you just say, oh, I have this Lagrangian and this Lagrangian and add them to it? Maybe, I don't know, maybe it will or maybe it doesn't. Just be careful, right? But then you try to uh, do the Lagrange equation to see if you really give the equation of motion that you would want. So if you try that, you can do the Lagrangian equation. Then you need to redo it. Yeah, but but now no worry, right? Your your final exam won't be like that. It will be much easier. Like this is the first thing. Second, when you have a large system, you will want to use the uh, method. If you're interested, let me know. I'll let you know which paper uh, that they have something called spanning tree and uh, with different note, and then they try to find the. Uh, Kinetic energy and potential energy based on the matrix multiplication, then you need to don't need to go through this. But there's a limitation of that one also because you need to assume the capacitive network uh, does not have the they are connected to a ground and then uh, what they call is the I forgot the passive node, and then you can uh, also decompose it into so-called active node, the inductor and the capacitor. They are not connected to ground. And uh, so there, there's some active research there, which I don't know well either, right? But let's just use this one for the exam. But yeah. The Lagrangian, now we want to find it. And then I suggest you to start with LT plus uh, LLC. Get what? This one? This one? Yeah, from nature. From where we only have a place that have this complicated equation. Oh, I just gave you, but then I, I guess it, right? Because from here you can see that this is like the potential energy. And this is, oh uh, no, no. This, yeah, and this is the kinetic energy. Uh, but but I just guess it because after the you do this Lagrange equation, it gives you the equation of motion. Yeah, you, you need to guess it, yes. Or use the approach that I did not teach you, okay? But again, do you think that I will ask you to do something as complicated as this in the exam? And if, if you cannot guess, then I give you zero? Mm -hmm. No, right? Because you're going to sue me. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Am I, if I if I really ask you to guess something, must must be something rather simple. So don't worry too much. I just want you to know what's going on, right? Yeah. So, but you should know that uh, you want to have an intellectual guess, right? Whether you are at that level or not, that doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. So why do you have two equations of motion? 
Yeah, you can combine them together, but my goal is not to solve it, right? I just want to uh, prove, find the Lagrangian that after this Lagrange equation, I can get what I want. So, so, so that, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, you mean this one? Yeah, uh, yeah because uh, actually, the, uh, as we said, right, uh, in the quantization, the potential energy comes from the flux, right? And the uh, uh, flux itself is the conjugator coordinate, right? So coordinate gives you the potential energy. And the charge itself over here, it is the velocity, right? Con uh, generalized velocity, it gives you the kinetic energy. Not because of square, but yes, but then uh, you're right, it fulfilled the V square, right? Okay, so then we need to find the LC, right? Uh, then it's very natural, I would just assume that the uh, LC tank have a regular form, and you can go now if you, you don't have time. I just spent a few more minutes to finish this, right? Uh, I have a LC tank. I know the capacitor is corresponding to the uh, kinetic energy. It stores the kinetic energy, right? The electric field, the charge is stored, is the conjugated kinetic energy. Uh, or, yeah. And then uh, the potential energy is the magnetic field, right? So then I just broadly think that, okay, then the kinetic energy must be half C, phi C dot square, and the potential energy must be one half C square. Is that okay? Phi C, this is phi C. This part is phi C, right? So with this, then I come up with the Lagrangian. And then I just assume it is correct, but now you see that if I do uh, any derivation of phi A, it should not, the new one, this one, right, doesn't have phi A. It's not going to affect anything. So that's why uh, I will still have the correct motion because I'm doing this derivation I showed in the lecture already. This one gives me the correct part for the one that involves the phi A, right? Uh, so for phi C, I just go through this Lagrange equation and they just keep going through, going through, then you find that this is the same of the equation five. So looks like it is correct. And then from there, I need to find the Hamiltonian. This is pretty lengthy. And I gave you, uh, what do I need to do? Because again, to find the Hamiltonian, right? How do you find Hamiltonian? You do summation, P dot, PQ dot, right? And then minus the Lagrangian, right? So the first thing I need to find is what is the P? P is the conjugated momentum. And what do I do? I use this equation, right? P equals to partial Lagrangian partial Q dot. Okay, that this is something you need to memorize or put in your cheat sheet, right? And then I find it is very lengthy, pretty lengthy, right? QC and QA. Remember, now we have two degrees of freedom, so we are sum summing over the different degree of freedom, right? In our lecture, we only have one, right? So then you need to solve them in order to get, because in Hamiltonian, I want to eliminate Q dot. I do not want to velocity, I want the momentum in Hamiltonian. Yeah? So two degrees of freedom of five. Yeah. Momentum. I mean, not, the, not two degrees, maybe they'll become four. I, what I'm saying is that you have two nodes, right? A and C. You have two, two, two variables. Two or two particles. Yeah. yeah, two particles, like that, yeah. Yeah, so each of them has X and Y, okay? And, and so now then I will solve, uh, solve this one because the point is that I want to do the, uh, again, I want to replace the uh, P dot, right? So a little bit messy. Uh, I don't know if you, were, you guys were able to do it, but you know we grade it very leniently. But I want you to go through the process. Right. So, I mean, I just keep solving and eventually we come up with a very lengthy equation. And then you need to go through the derivation. And then I think I told you that, what did I say? 
uh, some very messy supplements, right, to do the uh, calculation. So to provide you uh, what it looks like after the derivation. I think I mentioned in the uh, notebook and then, uh, yeah, you fill up, okay. Yeah. So the assumption you made the in the derivation you ignore C G. Is that CG? Uh, yeah, because we assume that C strong, uh, C sigma is much larger than C G. You try to make it small, yeah, 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 yeah. Which large last question? I forgot. Where the big book here? Uh, yeah, so this is everything, right? Until supplement. What I'm trying to do is that I now, this is the Hamiltonian, correct? Are you okay with this? It's P times Q dot, right? This is P, momentum. This is Q dot, velocity, minus L, right? So what do I do? I still keep this. And then just put in the Lagrangian that I have from the previous derivation, yeah? Once I plug in, I'm going to group them because I want to group all, I, I did not group actually. Then I, this one I do a simple grouping, only simple grouping. I group Q dot, Q dot square, Q dot one times Q dot two, Q dot two square, Q dot, uh, Q, uh, Q, yeah, this is X. And then I substitute, I need to know what is phi A dot, right? I did the, this, this before already. I got the phi A dot from here. I got the phi C dot from here, which are the moment, are the velocity. So what I did, I just substitute into here. You plug in, yeah. And then you simplify. Okay, and the simplify took me three pages, right? That's why I have the supplement. Yeah, and then you can just copy from here. Yeah. But beyond um, when we're turning it into a, a quantum operator, so you know, like a classical one, what at what point do we actually perform like the switch from like Q to the operator Q? I guess the, the reason I'm asking is because I think does that affect when you have like when you combine it all, you get this QA, QC term. Yeah. But if they're operators, you have QA, QC, and QC, QA. I guess, but QA, QC probably commute, right? So it doesn't matter. Yeah, you're right. They, they can be a good point. <laughs> yeah, so so maybe you that don't know why it's talking about in case you've missed it, right? Because he's saying that when we uh, should uh, convert this operator to QA hat, right? And he worried that we were swapping QA and QC before. But because they belong to different particles, I mean different cis, how to say, they, they commute with each other. They have different index, so it's no problem when you switch it. Yeah, good good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no phi dot because after you done the Hamiltonian, the phi dot are gone. Yeah, they are the velocity. Yeah, and then here we just uh, do. Uh, this one divided by two by the electron charge, then you have the lumber operator. And then uh, the phase would be the number? Of yeah, numbers. depends when you use it. For example, phase will go with the, I did not write it, right? We'll go with the lumber operator. And here I did not write, we should have the thrust go with the charge operator. But you wouldn't have that. that I, I should write, I should, huh? You wouldn't have that. No, no, but you should not. Here I will convert it to phi, I mean, plus, how do you say, plus A divided by the reduced uh, quantum thrust. And then I ha add head to here. Just a scale, scaling. Okay. Okay, yeah. How 
Yeah, this is just divided by, actually, I don't know why, divided by 2e or e. Yeah, it depends how you define the q, the, the n, yeah. By 2e, because it's Cooper pair, usually the 2e. But yeah, I don't know, maybe just e. Okay, yeah. So I have a stupid question. Um, can you apply Hamiltonian this approach to, let's say, other elements than uh, inductor capacitor, let's say, a resistive loss element like resistor, yeah, or maybe a diode? Or a uh, in principle, you can. So for the resistor, that is called dissipative element. So people have proved that you can uh, uh, model the dissipative element with a train of uh, LC oscillator, okay, with different mode, different L, M, and C, M, infinite of them, right? So this is equal to a resistor. Uh, yeah, so I don't understand this well, but basically is that because now it is, you need to be unitary, but the dissipative element is not. But they found that by doing this mathematically, they are equivalent. So this is very important in order to model the dissipative uh, mm. uh, uh, stuff. Yeah. So there are a chunk of theory. Yeah. Structure. Q which is analogous to the motion. Yeah. So is that the only one? Yeah. I think it's the major one. I mean, I mean, in electrical engineering, right, we only deal with a capacitor, inductor, and resistor. We can do a lot later on the way. Positive feedback for diary. Yeah. No, no, and what I'm trying to say is uh, this is the fun. It's just now you're asking for your uh, uh, mass, right? The spring mm -hmm. um, with right. mass on a spring. As you, again, you can have a whole complicated system to say there's an oscillation. Mm -hmm. But the simplest one will be LC. So simple harmonic motion is simple. The, simple harmonic. the simple, simple harmonic motion will be LC. <laughs> Yeah, you can always build a complicated circuit, still have right. that oscillation. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good. Any other questions? Uh, so we can use Chi Chi Jiu 